Hello, welcome to chapter seven, where we will be dealing with a whole lot of fraction-like things. Chapter 7.1 is about the fundamental property of rational expressions. Rational are fraction numbers, okay? A rational number is anything that can be written as a fraction. So we're gonna be dealing with a lot of things that we've dealt with before. This chapter is the reason why I've made sure that we dealt with a fraction every single day of class. Um, this section itself feels like a whole lot of little topics. They're all important in the end, but it is going to feel like we jump around a bit. First of all, some formal definitions. A rational expression is something like P over Q, where Q is not equal to zero. Now, that's important because we are never allowed to divide by zero, never ever, and a fraction is always a division. The main difference between the fractions we've been dealing with up until now and the ones we're going to be seeing is that we're gonna have um, variables on the denominator. We have not dealt with that before. And it is important, it does make a big difference because sometimes there will be a number we cannot plug in because if I plug it in and do the arithmetic, it's going to give me zero on the bottom. We talked about a whole bunch of different ways to remember we're not allowed to divide by zero. Um, remember, I fall off a ball if I try to stand on top of it. The zero on the bottom looks like a, a, a ball. Uh, my teacher's teacher blew up a calculator by accidentally dividing by zero on one of the very first calculators. You rip a hole in space-time and we all die. And the other one I've heard recently is under the line. Undefined. So if the zero is under the line, this is undefined. But if I have zero over three, this is zero. This is three divided by zero, this is zero divided by three. We can have a zero on the top, just not in the bottom. Okay, so in this example, if we were to plug in a negative three for y, we'd have a zero on the bottom. We say that y equal to negative three makes the expression undefined. And this is the same thing we were talking about when we talked about slopes. We had undefined slope when our zero was in the bottom. Okay, one of the things we're gonna have to be worried about is we're gonna have to be aware of when our uh, rational expression could be undefined. So you're going to have some questions where you're just asked to find what value, if any, makes it undefined. What we do is we set the denominator equal to zero, whatever it is, we solve that equation, and the solution or solutions are the values that make the expression undefined. The numerator at the top is important in general, but it plays no part in this type of problem. So if we're just being asked to find out where it's undefined, all we have to worry about is the denominator. Okay, so let's look at this problem. Determine the value or values, if any, that make the following expression undefined, okay? So what we do, the top pays no part. We go, we get a, a pen that works. And we set 3x minus 4 equal to 0. And then we just solve this. I need to move this over to here, so I add 4 to both sides. And that gives you 3x equal to 4. Divide both sides by 3. And, you, and x equals 4 thirds. So what value makes it undefined? x equal to 4 thirds. Now this is the way you're most likely to see this problem. They can also ask you to give the set of answers. You're gonna see this more in intermediate algebra and college algebra, but I'll go ahead and show you now just so it's not totally unfamiliar. We've dealt with something sort of like this before. The set of all x such that x does not equal 4 thirds. We dealt with something like this when we were talking about solving systems of equations where we had infinite solutions. Um, it's called set builder notation, and all this is saying is that x is allowed to be anything as long as, this is your condition, as long as x is not equal to 4 thirds. It can be anything else. Like I said, you're most likely to see this. Okay? We'll go on in the next section.